Every year, the week leading up to Halloween is International Bat Week. This year, we bring you a special edition of Bat Diaries from the Toronto Zoo's Native Bat Conservation Program, where we will celebrate these fascinating creatures and show you the not-so-spooky side of bats. This summer was our busiest season yet. The zoo's team tracked and trapped bats across Toronto. Luckily, we brought our night vision camera so that we can show you what the bats were up to. Despite the association of bats with Halloween, you won't see many at this time of year. They will have already headed to their hibernation caves or some species like the eastern red bat, silver-haired bat, and hoary bat will have moved south, some even as far as Mexico, to avoid the cold. One place where our night vision camera is helpful is for counting bats as they emerge from their roost. You can pause, rewind, and count any you may have missed. Here, the camera helped us to count these endangered little brown myotas as they emerged from a new roost we discovered this year. Away from the roost, night vision also helps us to improve our efforts to catch bats. Here we can see bats interacting with the mist nets we use to catch them, and sometimes getting caught. And while you might have seen our mist nets for catching bats in a previous episode of Bat Diaries, you might not have seen a harp trap, another way of catching bats. As you can see, bats collide with tensioned fishing line and then fall into the bag, but then have the ability to move around, more comfortable than a mist net. However, things don't always go to plan. This bat pulled a Houdini. Watch closely as he flies away, leaving our scientists perplexed, as they could see guano, or bat poop, inside the bag, but no bat. Watching the video afterwards solved the mystery, and we were able to modify the trap to stop future bats making the same escape. Finally, here's the most exciting footage we captured with our night vision camera this year. A side of bats that not many people get to see. Inside a roost, undisturbed, footage of natural behavior. This little brown myotis, an endangered species, is grooming itself before emergence. Little browns used to be Ontario's most common species before the arrival of white nose syndrome, a disease caused by a cold-loving fungus accidentally introduced to North America. The fungus has killed around 92% of Ontario's little brown myotis since 2010, which is why the zoo started our program to help these threatened species right in our backyard, and why it's so exciting to find healthy individuals like this one. This footage shows the two bat species that most commonly use bat boxes in Ontario. The size difference between the two are quite noticeable. The larger species is the big brown bat, currently Ontario's most common bat, and the smaller bat is the little brown myotis. Bats are very clean animals. This bat spent around 40 minutes grooming before heading out for the night. Does this sound like anyone you know? I hope this batty footage has left you with a greater appreciation for these small and mysterious animals. From all of us here at the Toronto Zoo's Native Bat Conservation Program, we wish you a happy Bat Week. Check out our webpage and the zoo's social media to learn more.